In this movie, Janice from Mean Girls and Homelander from The Boys have a daughter that looks like an ugly goblin Rapunzel. She's so hideous, in fact, that they killed a girl on Halloween just for looking at her. Then they locked their goblin daughter away in the walls of their house. If that sounds like a fun time to you, then you're gonna love this movie. <laughs> It's called Cobweb. It was released in 2023, and it was directed by a man named Samuel Bowden. This is the first movie of his that I've seen. It stars Lizzie Kaplan, Anthony Starr, and Woody Norman. And now for a quick word from our sponsor. Thank you so much to Opera Desktop for sponsoring this video. You deserve a better browser. You deserve to improve your online experience. And you can do so with Opera's free VPN, ad blogger, and flow file sharing, which are just a few of the must have features built into Opera for faster, smoother, and distraction free browsing. Opera has a free built in VPN and ad blocker. You can browse with enhanced privacy and security, all the while blocking annoying ads. There's also an integrated browser AI system named Aria. Aria is over here on the taskbar on the left. You can click on the icon and you can ask it anything you'd like. What is the strongest ghost type Pokemon? I mean, personally, we all know that Mimikyu is the strongest ghost type, so this is obviously wrong, but most of the time it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> In the sidebar, I also have WhatsApp for business. I also have Instagram and I also have Twitter. I also have Spotify as my music player. Opera also has a modular AI ready design with a dynamic interface. In the sidebar, elements are dynamically adjusted as others are added, making space for more cutting edge AI integrations as they become available. And as extensions become more and more relevant with new generative AI features, Opera groups them in a collapsible module in the address bar, simplifying the space while retaining quick access. Use my link below to download Opera today. Use Opera now, do it now. It's honestly the best browser you can find. The movie centers around a small family. The parents are Carol and Mark, and their kid is named Peter. The movie mostly follows Peter. He starts to notice a strange noise coming from his wall. He's got the ugliest wallpaper known to man. What are those, hot air balloons? Looks like shit. Anyway, Peter tells his mom that he heard something in the wall. So she enters his room and knocks on the wall, knowing full well that she locked her own daughter in there. What would she have done if her daughter knocked back? Huh? Thankfully for this movie's plot, she didn't. I think they think that their daughter's dead, but to their surprise, she's been able to survive all these years off of bugs and rats, I guess. Where does she get her water? Who knows? Probably jammed one of her goblin teeth into a pipe or something. They don't really answer those questions because who cares? This is what the girl looks like. Very normal. She looks like a monster from where the wild things are. Peter is relentlessly bullied at school by a group of douchey kids. Girl, fuck them kids. In one of Peter's classes, there's a substitute teacher named Miss Divine. She gets to know Peter because he doesn't attend recess due to the kids who bully him. Peter's dad tells him about a little girl who went missing on Halloween. This is the same girl that they killed because she got a glimpse of their freak daughter. Am I gonna disappear? No. We would never let that happen. So that was a fucking lie. The girl on the walls whispers to Peter, so he freaks out and calls his dad into the room. Mark examines the wall and blames rats. Yo, kill me with this So this goblin girl in the wall has a plan to convince Peter to kill his parents and to set her free. Yeah, it's a pretty far-fetched plan. <laughs> But lucky for her, he's a bully victim at school. So she uses that to get closer to Peter. Let's just say that you're these parents, right? I don't know why you ever would be. They're kind of psychotic. Anyway, you lock your goblin ass daughter into the walls. Why you don't move house, who knows? <laughs> I don't know why you would want to live there if the corpse of your daughter is in the walls. But hey, maybe they're concerned that the next people that move in will find out. Still got that deposit check? That's why their house looks like shit. <laughs> It looks so old, it hasn't been updated in years. Back to the point at hand, if you are one of these parents, and your son is telling you that he's hearing something in the walls, and you're responsible for putting your daughter in these walls, I think you might put two and two together. <laughs> these two people are dumb as stumps, so it takes them quite a while to catch on. It's not even like their son asked them one time. He tells them over and over that he's hearing something in the walls, and not once do they think, hmm. Maybe our daughter is still alive and we should take care of that. 
I don't know, gas her out or something. And then afterwards go on vacation until the smell subsides. Or I don't know, go back there and shoot her. They have a door behind a clock that leads behind the walls. That's how they were able to put her back there. So just go into this door with a shotgun. <laughs> she can't run very far. And if you do some damage to your walls, well, I think it's time for some renovations anyway. White people renovating houses. Instead, they ignore this problem and hope that their daughter in the walls will chill out or something. We later find out that she's been in these walls for years. If she survived this long, then she's probably not going to die anytime soon. She found some strange unlimited stash of bugs and water back there. <laughs> so do something to take care of this problem. Peter draws a painting at school that shows his wall saying, help me. But the teacher thinks that it's him saying this. So she grows concerned and visits Peter's house. She gives the drawing to his mother. Peter has an overactive imagination. <sighs> she shows Peter and she's like, why are you asking for help? When she knows damn well what the picture means. She keeps pressing Peter about it too. When she should say something like, is this picture you asking for help? Or is it someone else like a ghost? You know, to get the truth out of him. This way she would learn for sure if her daughter was alive and if she was trying to contact Peter. But instead she's like, why are you asking for help, Peter? Huh? Tell me. Tell me now. That night the girl on the walls bangs on the walls to wake up Peter. Shouldn't the parents hear something banging on the walls even if they're in a different room? I don't know, whatever. Peter wakes up and the girl starts talking to him. And they start forming a bond. This douchebag named Brian at school destroys Peter's pumpkin. And Peter really liked this pumpkin. So the next day, Brian brings in a replacement. <laughs> I guess he got in trouble with the parents. So he kind of had to remember what Peter's pumpkin looked like and draw the same face on a different pumpkin and bring it to school <laughs> to give to Peter. It's so funny. I honestly laughed when he walked in with the pumpkin. The girl on the walls convinces Peter to stand up for himself. Do it. So he ends up pushing Brian down some stairs, which breaks his leg. <laughs> Karma. Homelander grounds Peter because he got expelled. And that doesn't mean he has to stay in his room for a month. Instead, they force him to live in this creepy basement. The door to it is locked and hidden behind a fridge. I know Peter's just a kid, but wouldn't that be kind of weird, right? It looks like they're hiding something. And why would they continue to hide their basement if their daughter is in the walls? Later, we find out that their basement has this strange like pit installed with a cage door on top. It's pretty deep too. And I guess that's where they kept their daughter for some time before deciding to put her in the walls instead because that's a lot more secure, I guess. Did they put her in the walls because they thought she was dead? Because I can't think of any other reason they would do this. We later find out that they killed a trick-or-treater and buried her in their garden. So why wouldn't they do the same thing with their daughter? Unless they're keeping her alive in their walls because they still care for her? which I don't think is the case, because how would they be feeding her? The only entrance to the walls is through a locked door behind a clock, and it's not like this goblin girl can't defend herself. She kills people very easily later in the movie. So if her parents were feeding her, she would just wait for them to open the door, kill them both, and leave. So they must think that she's dead in there. So this means they put her in the walls while she was still alive, which is so idiotic. If they had any visitors, she would just bang on the walls and scream, and they would obviously be able to hear her. If she was in this pit in the basement, it would be a lot harder for people to hear her down there. Not to mention it would be a lot harder for her to hear anybody entering the house if she were down there. Anyway. Yeah! It's also really strange that they hid away their basement because that's a lot of useful storage space that they're not using. Miss Divine shows up at the house again because she's concerned that Peter's in danger. Mark lets her in the house, even though he knows that his daughter is alive in the walls. <laughs> I mean, technically he doesn't know, but... I just don't accept that, okay? I mean, the movie wants us to think that he doesn't know that his daughter is alive in the walls, but he does. It's so obvious. Peter's hearing something in the walls. What else could it be? He says that it must have been a rat earlier, but like, come on, dude. And not only that, he locked his son up in the hidden basement and he lets this teacher into their home. It's so weird. Like, what if he was screaming? You couldn't exactly let the teacher know about your hidden basement. While Miss Divine is in their home, their goblin daughter remains quiet in the walls. It's so weird. 
Shouldn't she be banging the shit out of these walls and screaming? Especially if she wants to be set free so bad? This would be a great opportunity to take advantage of. I know she doesn't want her parents to know that she's still alive, but I think trying to get Miss Divine's attention would be a much better way to try and achieve freedom than trying to convince this kid to kill his own parents and set you free. But whatever, what do I know? Maybe the Goblin Girl was sleeping when Miss Divine arrived. That's probably what was happening. Peter does attempt to make some noise, but the laundry is going at the same time, so Mark blames the laundry. These parents act like psychos when Miss Divine is there too, which is definitely giving her more of a reason to be skeptical of them. So why invite her into your home in the first place? Carol just straight up yells at Miss Divine. She's like, why are you being so weird with my son? The audacity of this woman! Yeah, you're making a great case for yourself. They're not the smartest parents on earth. Eventually, they release Peter from the basement. That night, he hears the Goblin Girl again. He's directed towards a hole in the wall that she made, I guess. Which is weird, right? If she can make a hole in the wall, why didn't she just, you know, try to escape? Maybe she's been making this hole for years. She spills the beans to Peter, so he learns that she's his sister and that their parents are evil. She tells him that she's been waiting for him to get old enough so he can move a clock that sits in front of a door that leads inside the wall so she can escape. Peter has a nightmare and it's so goofy. His father Mark is standing in the corner of the room and he already looks pretty creepy, but they do this thing where they match his blinking with some music. And I did not find it scary at all. It's so silly looking. And then his mother Carol comes out of nowhere. Her eyes look pretty creepy and she rushes at Peter. The lights go off and you can still hear her running, but she was pretty close to the room when the lights went off. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense that it would take her that much longer to get to his room. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I found this scene more funny than scary. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that his family lives on a tiny pumpkin patch. It's so weird. <laughs> They don't ever mention why they live on a pumpkin patch. Do they sell these pumpkins? Why do they have them? The only reason I can think of is that this is a Halloween movie. Pumpkins are relevant for Halloween, right? Let's make them live on a pumpkin patch. The goblin girl on the wall tells Peter to look in the garden because that's where they hide the bodies. Peter goes out there and digs like two inches down and finds a skull. She wasn't buried very well, to say the least. The girl tells Peter that a trick-or-treater saw her one year, so their parents killed her and buried her in the pumpkin patch. <laughs> Was she trick-or-treating alone without her parents? How the hell do you kill a trick-or-treater on Halloween without anybody noticing? Unless it's like a dead night and that was the only one. It's just so funny to me. These people kill this girl for just seeing their daughter. Little drastic, I think. Oh, boo -hoo -hoo. What, because their daughter was creepy looking and they couldn't live with people knowing that? Maybe they didn't want people knowing that they had a daughter. It's just so crazy to me, you know? Why didn't they just make up an excuse for this girl? Why didn't they just tell her something? Tell her that she's not your daughter, that she's your niece that lives in New York or something. I don't know, dude. Just think up something. Killing her is like the last thing they should have done, you know? It's just insane to me that the writers couldn't think of anything, you know? If you want these two people to kill someone, then at least make it believable. Whatever. Peter calls Miss Divine and asks her for help. Uh, I wanted to record a message for you. His mother overhears this call and she just pops up in the room randomly, like she's a ghost or something. She tries to rectify the situation by calling Miss Divine back. Eventually, Peter's mother finds the hole in the wall. She freaks out and eventually tells Mark about it. Brian and the bullies show up to check out the house because later they want to go to this house and beat the shit out of Peter. <laughs> this scene just reminds me of that scene from The Shining. You know, the one with the mask. <laughs> On Halloween night, the family is at the dinner table eating liquid shit soup. It doesn't taste the best, so daddy ends up puking and dies. Okay, I lied. Peter put rat poison in his mother and father's soup. Before vomiting, his mother chases him with a kitchen knife to kill her own son, I guess. Peter kicks her down some stairs. <laughs> this little guy likes kicking people downstairs. His mother's last words are, because I guess they gave birth to a devil spawn, but they never explained why, they just did. So yeah, Peter takes the keys from his mom, he moves the clock, and unlocks the secret door to let her out. He does so, and he instantly regrets it. Oh, fuck. This bitch is weird. <laughs> 
She's like a female golem with 20 foot long hair. And I'm not exaggerating. Her hair is at least 20 feet long. <laughs> so the stalkers from Lies of P show up to beat the shit out of a seven year old kid. <laughs> like they bring hockey sticks and shit. Little bro Brian comes along too. He's using crutches. What did they plan to do if the parents were home? Beat the shit out of them as well? Or what, just kill the whole family? Very normal. So yeah, obviously these kids are just fodder for the goblin girl. Whenever someone sees this girl, they normally just see her long ass wig. I know it's supposed to be her hair, but it's so obviously a wig. And then they get killed by her. It's almost as if she purposefully uses her hair to distract her victims. Most of what we see of this girl is just her hair. Hello? <gasps> what? That is so weird. Whoa! Again? What the hell's happening? Come on, dude. I know, you're gonna get pulled away, yep. Okay, now it's just kind of getting... Really? She climbs around the ceiling and her long ass hair is dangling down. She giggles like an evil version of Disney's Goofy as she does this. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, gosh. It's pretty wild how strong this girl is. She kind of resembles the girl from The Grudge, just by the way she walks. You know, she has that creepy, like, spider walk. She tells Peter a story about how poorly she was treated as a kid. We're never given an answer as to why this happened. Maybe because she was different and weird looking like Baby Grinch. She was ostracized in the same way. She tells Peter that she learned how to climb and bite over the years as she was held captive. This totally explains her superhuman strength and how she's able to lift these fully grown men like they're rag dolls. <laughs> she must have been doing a lot of push-ups. So Miss Devine shows up at their house late at night because she's very concerned about Peter since that phone call. Why didn't she call the police first? Or CPS? Why does she insist on being the hero? Anyway, she's greeted by an evil wig. Do you wear wigs? Uh, no, I do not. Have you worn wigs? No, I have not. When will you wear wigs? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Devine sees the creepy golem girl and attempts to leave the house in fear. But oh no, the front door is locked. Okay, unlock it. You're literally staring at the lock. <laughs> anyway, she doesn't think to do that. She hears Peter yell for her to run. So she attempts to save him. God damn it, dude. I hate stupid people in these movies. I mean, I know that he's a kid and she feels bad for him. She connected with him at school. She, you know, feels responsible for him. She wants to save him, but still. She finds out that he's trapped in the wall. <laughs> Gollum attempts to get in Peter's room, where Miss Divine is, but she closes the door, oh no! Goblin Girl's only weakness, wood. Let me in, let me in! She can't get past the door. It's a barrier, what she's supposed to do. She can decapitate people, no problem, throw fully grown men around like rag dolls, but doors, oh shit, she can't deal with that. So what does she do? She runs back into the door to get inside the wall to get Peter, as Miss Divine hacks at the wall to make a hole big enough for Peter to escape. Eventually she gets Peter out, but it doesn't matter. Goblin Girl drags him back in. Ah, no! ah! <laughs> the Goblin Girl puts Peter into the huge pit cage in the basement. This part is so funny, dude. Look at how long her hair is. Jesus Christ. Are you kidding me? We get a look at her face and she tells Peter that she was born this way. She just has the genetics of a Lord of the Rings orc. I mean, it's just that simple. And then Peter uses her hair to climb out of the hole. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. Peter pulls at her hair as Miss Divine beats her. They throw her ass in the cage and lock it. This leads me to ask, why didn't the parents just keep her in this cage, you know? What was the point in putting her in the walls? It's not like they had to worry about Peter finding the basement. The door to it was hidden behind a fridge. The movie ends with this goblin girl telling Peter that she's gonna always be there haunting him, you know? You're never gonna know if I'm there or not. I might escape at any moment, even though I was stuck in this wall for 20 years. So yeah, that's the movie Cobweb. I loved it. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm thinking. I think of this movie as a comedy more than a horror. It's a pretty good time if you want to give it a watch. Hmm. Thank you so much to all my patrons that make videos like this possible. If you're scrolling up the screen right now, thank you so much. 
I love you. You can also support this channel by going to AlienClothing.com, my personal clothing brand. We've been working on a lot of amazing designs over the years, and you're definitely going to find something you love over there. We just released a bunch of new stuff, like this shirt, and this shirt, and this shirt, and this hoodie, and this hoodie, and this hoodie. I love them all so much. I'm just a big fan of cosmic horror and weird stuff. If you are too, then you might like these clothes. That's gonna do it, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.